Hello and welcome to my 2024 beginner's guide for Black Desert. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about a few things that I believe baffle beginners whenever they start playing Black Desert. And I want to make the journey easier for every single one of you. So uh, we're gonna start straight from uh, the beginning. Right now we just press start game and uh, you are presented with a list of servers. Now you don't have to think too much about this one. Just pick a server, whatever it is, and get into it. Preferably not the servers with number one, because on those servers sometimes the mobs disappear because there's wars going on, and when wars go on on servers, they just like delete all the mobs on the map. You don't have to worry about that too much. Just go on with any server that doesn't have a number one in it, and you should be fine. Now, as soon as you're presented with this, you'll probably have no characters. Like, the, this is my list of characters here. Yours will be probably just empty and it'll have like a, like a plus like I have here. You just press on it and you can create like a, a, a new character. And here you're going to be presented with this uh, window, most likely, uh, asking you if you want your character to be a seasonal character. Well... The answer is yes. As the, your first character, you'd prefer to have a seasonal character, and the reason is because there's a lot of uh, useful items and useful quests that help you as a new player progress faster on your seasonal character. So like the seasonal character is kind of different to a normal character, but it's not similar to other games. Here, the seasonal character plays on the same servers as the normal characters. They do have some extra servers just for seasonal stuff, where you can do certain quests and, like, you have some uh, specifically seasonal drops, but nothing too crazy. It's just to help beginners get to the level of everyone else who's been playing for years. That's the whole purpose of those servers. Now, as soon as you get here, you might be overwhelmed by the amount of choices you have. Like, you have a Scholar is the latest class. Uh, you can pretty much go through all of this here. You can literally just create any sort of character you want. But, like, if you're one of those hardcore uh, sweaty guys that wants to play the best classes in the game right now, here's five of the best PvE classes that you like to play. So first of all, you have Awakening Sorceress. You also have uh, Ninja Succession, Witch Succession, Land Succession, and Awakening Nova. Those are the top five best PvE characters in the game right now. Now, if your interest is to be sweaty in PvP, then you have Awakening Dracania. Tamer Awakening, Mystic Succession, Berserker Awakening, and Nova Awakening as well. Yeah, Nova is great for both PV and PvP right now. Now, without further ado, let's just get in. We're gonna go to character creation. I'm gonna create a scholar because we have uh we, we haven't gotten a scholar yet. This is the only class I haven't gotten. So, let's see, there's only one thing I want to mention about the scholar here. Uh, everything else is literally up to you. Uh, basically, what I want to talk about is this horoscope. This is the thing that most people are confused with. Everything else is, like, pretty straightforward. You know how to make a character in 2024, don't lie to me, okay? So, first of all, we got the horoscope. There's a bunch of stuff here. You got, like, constellations and stuff. Well, this doesn't matter too much. Like, for most people, it probably doesn't matter at all. But if you want to know what it is, basically, there's an in-game mini-game which you use in order to gain trust from, like, NPCs in different towns, and they give you info in exchange. So, like, certain constellations, if they align with the NPC you're gonna play the mini-game on, it makes the mini-game slightly easier. So if you're gonna be like an achievement hunter or something, you might want to pick something that helps you out. Like some of the best ones are the dragon one or like uh, 
shield or maybe if you want to go with the easy ones like the key because you'll meet a lot of npcs that have the key constellation but like shield dragon and hammer are kind of like the hardest ones in game so you'd want to pick one of those um other than that i don't think there's much to be talk uh, to, to be taught about like in character creation um maybe maybe there's one more thing like there's a beauty album if you suck at creating characters uh you can just come to the beauty album and just pick one for example i'm gonna just just pick this one for for this uh example here and it'll just update it on your character okay we got we got the character going it's on season okay make sure you have this season character shit like the check mark and uh then you can start all right now that we got the character created here you can see it's in a yellow border if it's a seasonal character in case you forgot if you like putting the check mark or you don't know if you did it you can check it after and you see this yellow border going here so i'm just gonna enter it's it gonna tell me that it starts the tutorial it's okay just play the tutorial it's gonna explain to you a few things it's it's okay it's pretty good all right so once you finish the tutorial you will be uh shown this um three choices for the starting zone now out of the three choices i would recommend you start with the ancient stone chamber now ancient stone chamber is the most uh balanced out of all of them it's uh, the OG starting zone, basically. You have a little bit of quests, a, a little bit of, like, killing. You kind of get the gist of questing and also the gist of, like, fighting mobs. While in uh, Mountain of Eternal Winter, it's a lot of questing, but less... Um, there, there's less mobs to kill, so, like, there's just, like, questing for about, like, 8 to 10 hours. There's a few quests that require you to like kill mobs but most of it is just like questing pretty easy to do if you don't like killing mobs or like why are you even playing the game first of all sorry <laughs> like uh like honestly it's it's literally either a mountain of, uh, mountain of eternal winter or ancient stone chamber uh the reason is because like both of them are kind of like noob friendly while land of the morning light presents you with some boss fights as well which could be a little bit hard for someone that just started playing the game so i'd recommend picking either uh but here i'm just gonna start with ancient stone chamber because it's the most balanced and i think you should do uh this as well so let's just get going basically you're gonna spawn in a different zone with a different storyline and with uh like you're, you're in a completely different part of the map as well uh but like this only matters for a little bit in the beginning uh, you gotta do this quest line here, and then uh, at the end, you'll still have all the other quests to do as well. So, basically, you're not skipping everything. You you can do this quest line if you pick Mountain of the Eternal Winter, and you also can do Mountain of the Eternal Winter if you've started here. So, it's you're not skipping, you're just choosing your start. That's it. So, let's see. Now... The first thing that I want to talk about as we're getting into the game for the first time, basically. And now, before we go with the questing and a few, like, tips from here on, I would like to first go to settings. And let's talk a little bit about settings, okay? So, first of all, you go to performance settings. But what's important is you want to make sure that uh, you're using the remastered version on high-end graphics, okay? Remastered is for gameplay, Ultra is generally for like high level uh, quality clips and shit like that, great pictures and stuff, but it's it's pretty harsh on a lot of like PCs, unless you have like a super high end PC, don't play Ultra, okay? Now you also want to make sure your anti-aliasing is on uh, TAA and uh, you want to make sure you don't have uh, the hit effects on and I don't know snow buildup doesn't really matter it only slows in the uh, mountain of eternal winter so it really doesn't matter it's your choice but the hit effect you want it off because like basically when you're attacked you will just be flashed with like this I don't know it's, it's really annoying okay just just turn it off uh what I would say is important here is maybe auto frame optimization if your pc is not too great you might want to turn this on and then have it on 60 frames like here 
and uh, if you turn this on basically it's just gonna adjust uh, certain things if your frames are dropping so like if your frames start dropping it will like uh, make things in the distance less of lower quality so your PC can handle it. It'll make uh, certain NPCs that don't matter just disappear, you know, that kind of thing. But it'll be automatically, you know, you can actually do this yourself in the settings. Just like click a button and just uh, make uh, NPCs not show up unless they're important. Uh, but uh, this one does it automatically, okay? Uh, another thing is... Basically, the character optimization, uh, you are just choosing how many, like, players you can see on the screen and to what distance, okay? This is, like, you, you want to hold this somewhere in the middle, so, like, it's, it's from 10 to 50, uh, I have 25, okay? So, like, 25 is, like, half of 50, it's not really in the middle, I don't know why it starts from 10, I guess it's just, like, it, it cannot just not show you people. So that's why it's 10 probably. But I keep it on 25 and I think it's fine. You can put it on 50 if your PC is like, a, I don't know, some NASA PC or some bullshit. Uh, workers and pets. Now, you will have workers in this game do uh, certain tasks for you. So you don't have to do them. And uh, basically, this button allows you to see the workers as you're traversing the world, okay? So like as you're going through the world, you walk on your like uh, on certain paths and you will just see your workers there with the, like some freaking bag on their shoulder just like i don't know pulling carts and shit like that okay if you want to see them like that it, like it's immersing for you then you can turn this on there uh also i make it so that it shows only my pets i have five pets uh i don't really want to go into a city and uh like i don't know clutter my screen with everybody else's pets and that also uh, cut some resources and stuff, so I keep it on show only my pets because you know you want to show you you at least want to look at them if you bought them, right? And then uh, hide certain NPCs. This is also like what I was talking about earlier. You can literally just hide certain NPCs that don't matter out of the screen. So like if you look right here, there's a lot of NPCs like here on the right and stuff. Sorry, I'm I gotta move this one out of the way. My bad. And all of those NPCs are nice to, to see here. Like it's it's it, it looks uh it looks a lot better with them, but they're not important, so you can just remove them pressing this button here. Now on display settings, obviously you know what to do. If if you played a game in your whole life ever, you'll probably know a lot of those settings. I don't really have to explain a lot of them. UI scale though helps your UI scale, right? <laughs> I keep it on 99 and it's the way it looks right now, but you can make it much, uh, like, let's say, let's, let's go to, to, to say like 50. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it 50. It'll look something like this. Okay. <coughs> now I'll press cancel because I can't, I'm sorry. I'm wearing glasses and I see no shit there, but, uh, yeah, uh, anything else here? Not, not much. Display quality is literally what we were looking at earlier. Uh, there's nothing much here to talk about except like, you know, uh, there's uh, blood stains, show blood splatter. If this is off, you might want to turn it on because it looks cooler. Um, other than that, I feel like everything else we've talked about. Uh, remove far away effects. I did this because if you're fighting in a like a like a node war or siege war and there's like a lot of people on the screen fighting, you don't necessarily have any reason to see, like, the spell effects of someone that's, like, super far away from you. It doesn't really help. I feel like it's kind of a no-brainer to just, like, remove that. But it's it's literally up to you and your how, how good your PC is. But on camera graphics, there's a few things I want to talk about. First of all is vibration. Uh, there's basically when you're fighting, when your character moves and hits, it just does, like, a shake which is kind of annoying. I would like the camera to be like static, you know, and when I'm fighting to be able to like keep track of what's going on without the wiggling, you know, but um, yeah, I, I just turned this off. You'll have it on if you like it, keep it. But for me, it's a no. Also motion blur for every single game. I, I, I put that shit to zero in every single game. I don't even know why they added that freaking option in the, in the first place. But yeah, whatever. Now, uh, in general settings, um, I don't think there's a lot to be talking about. 
I, I would just say the combat assistance, you would like to turn it off. You want to aim the spells yourself, because sometimes, like, the system is just bad. Uh, but, like, because, like, it's combat assistance, it's there... It, it just turns around and it does like certain movements on its own like this aim assistance w with the target is is okay like this one you leave it on but i think this combat assistance is the one you want turned off okay uh some people have aim assistance turned off as well i don't know i keep it on i don't think it's really bad for anybody show only my pets that's important hide fairy i i usually hide the fairy because i don't think like it doesn't look interesting or anything like and all fairies look kind of the same. Uh, there's a few special fairies. Some people got them on special events that look different. But like the basic ones don't look too interesting. So I just hide it. You, you can have it on show. It doesn't matter. Uh, hide others campsite. Okay, this is important. Uh, some people have this uh, thing that's called like camping tool. You can put it on and you can literally repair items on the spot and stuff like that as you're uh, fighting monsters because your items degrade as you're fighting monsters so eventually you will have to repair them um now with the uh, maids and butlers uh basically i i chose to hide all the maids and butlers except one in my residence because like if you buy a house your maids and butlers because you can have maids and butlers in this game will show up in the house when you go in but I have, like, I don't even know, like, some 26, okay? I have a 26 total, right? It's 12 and 14, 26. My math is not uh, wrong here, okay? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, so, yeah, it would be weird going into a small house and there's, like, 26 <laughs> maids and butlers around. Like, basically, there's more people in my house than there's space. So, I keep it to one, because, like, it makes more sense for one person to have, like, maybe one, two, even three. Maybe, maybe in a mansion, it's great to have, like, more than ten. I don't know. But this is the place, like, this is the most important setting ever. So, like, you probably noticed, as you got into the game, that there is a lot of spam in the middle of the screen. User got, no, I don't know what item. User upgraded, I don't know what bullshit. You don't want to see that. That's literally spam. That's not important for you. It doesn't really matter that user is done, whatever. There's a lot of players doing things at the same time. So you will just be spammed. At some point, you will see a not notification in the middle of the screen. And that notification will be literally like two hours old because there's that many notifications that it starts lagging behind. So I'd suggest at shared, okay, I literally have everything unchecked. Because you literally don't care about anything. Like on this list, there's nothing good. Uh... Obviously, there might be things that you might want to check back in later. Stuff like Imperial trading announcements or like, uh, I don't know, maybe some cert uh, central market announcements if you really care. Like, I don't know, do you want to buy something and somebody posts the stuff you want to buy later on? Uh, you might get a notification for it. But other than that, like, I feel like most of them are kind of, like, bullshit. And the enhancement failure is the worst, okay? Like, that one, the failure and success is, like, the worst. Because it literally shows you, like, user made the most bullshit item at, like, plus two. Oh, congratulations, buddy. I don't know. Nobody cares. Next. Uh, personal, I don't know. I have, like, the zone change. I don't really care, like... Uh, you might want to keep this on so you know the zones better, you know, to get, like... It helps get them in your head in the beginning, but as I played, like, over 7,000 hours, I'm sick of seeing that notification, so I pulled it off. Uh, fitness level, it just tells you when, when your fitness is up. So, like, you can see here, I have fitness right here. And, uh, basically, you got, like, breath, strength, and health. And, uh basically those improve similar to gta uh if you know like you, when you run you get more breath breath gives you more stamina so you can run longer kind of then you got strength basically this allows you to carry more items because items have a weight in this game and uh if you go to full weight you will be uh 
encumbered and you would not be able to move as fast and it just gets slower and slower until you're pretty much stuck now it, eventually it's gonna be fine you're, you're gonna be fine and then health obviously gives you a little bit of extra hp whenever you level it breath is leveled by uh running strength is uh leveled by like generally you hold like something heavy on your back i know like a trading item it, it works only with trading items or there's certain foods that uh literally give you strength level uh and then health is only increased by eating like food in the game so that's how you level those and uh this is what the fitness level is and basically it tells you you leveled up so you might want to hold this one on it doesn't really matter you can turn it off it's not really important now the conquest war and guild wars it'll just spam you in the center of the screen with this guild uh, gave war to this guild and shit like that and you don't really care about that either and then we have the alerts you want to stop the pearl item alerts uh friend login you don't really care maybe you want to hold this on it's up to you if you press n you have the like friend list here you can add friends add groups you know check your uh, friend requests everything now um again we also have like uh a guild member login I, I think that's also not important for me personally a guild mission i keep it on because you want to know when a guild mission starts so you can help with the guild mission if you want to uh nearby monsters like sometimes you go buy some monsters and it just tells you like oh there's a dangerous monster going around i don't really care that much uh obviously this is because i'm an old player but you might want to turn this on if you want to get like a notice for that and then uh mortal danger uh basically this is the most loved option in the game like people love to turn this off basically when you're 20 percent or like 15 percent hp like your screen goes black and it starts like fl flashing and breathing in and stuff and it gets really annoying if you play the game and you get annoyed by that it's this option right here you click on it and it's pretty much done with navigation arrows i don't have navigation arrows on because i'm like pretty old at a game and i know where to go and shit like that but uh you can choose like guide arrows or a marked line whenever you get a quest you can literally right click so like here on the right side you can see it's uh is the quest list and the first quest on top is literally the main quest like right here and if you right click on it see it makes a line to where i need to go but like on screen if i close everything you have just a, a little arrow near you showing you the way but you can have like dots on the on the floor that literally just lead you up to the next uh, place where you need to go with the quest so if you want you can turn uh the option on and it's all good like it, it's really up to you can you like guide arrows is gonna be like uh this see it's it puts like a, a line of arrows and that shows you the direction to go in now other than that i don't think there's uh, a lot of shit to talk about here I'll, I'll keep my no navigation guide you can use guide arrows marked line you you can experiment with that yourself now with character interactions uh, I reject everything because like some people while you're playing the game fighting uh, they just come up to you and just spam uh, invites uh, they spam duels and uh, just pressing the space uh, bar which you will press a lot um, literally makes it so that you accept the duel instantly so I have uh, reject duel on so that they don't just come up to me and just instantly duel me I have trade uh, off because like they sometimes randomly press trade even though most items are not tradable in this game you just have like shitty items that you can trade and that's it um yar requests as well they do the same thing guild war uh i don't know i i never was in a place where i had to accept or reject guild wars but i have it off as well uh so like basically you want to you want to hold this up it's always reject always reject if you want to now uh minimap guide i'm not sure how good it is you can test it out maybe it's turned on and you don't want to turn it off i don't know uh this is something i haven't tested uh rotate the minimap to um match your character's perspective now this is something i'd say 
you don't want to because it gets confusing easily. If the minimap is static and you move on it and it doesn't move with you, it's a lot better for your brain to understand where you're at and where you need to go, in my opinion. But it's up to you. You decide. Um, hide UI when struck. Well, this is basically... Like, this is something you don't really want. Like, basically, if I'm holding the this window right here and I'm explaining this to you, if a monster comes up to me and hits me, it closes the window. And it's really annoying sometimes because maybe the monster doesn't even deal damage to me most of the time. So I, I, I might not even be able to die, but it just continuously closes the window whenever I get hit. So I have this on off. I don't want it to hide it. Now, uh, we're going to be playing a little bit. Uh, and I'll explain a few things as well. Uh, there's also, first of all, the chat. You want to go to the chat down here. So you have the chat. You press control so your mouse shows up like this. And you go here to chat. Chat 1. Press the cogwheel. And now you want to remove everything that I have removed here. Because this is just like a lot of spam. Like you want to see only like messages from players. No system notifications. So I just literally uncheck everything on system because it just keeps telling you random bullshit if you want you can just add up another chat like i have see i have chat one two three four five you add more and you can make them for specific things so if you want to see system notifications when you're fighting for example when you kill a mob it tells you how much silver you got from it what item you got from the mob that might be useful sometimes so you make different like windows for different uh, like purposes. Like this is my all purpose chat, so I keep it kind of like this. Uh, you want to make sure you have the notice. Uh, the then you would have like this. The notice basically is like the GM messages and stuff. Like the, I believe that's what it is. Maybe I'm wrong. Server group. This is the group. The basically people on your server. So like my server up here to the right is uh serendia 2 everyone from serendia 1 to 6 literally sees the messages in like orange you can also change the color if you want by the way uh guild if you have a guild it'll show up so i'm holding it up but if your guild is too spammy you might want to make a new chat window for that um it's got there's gonna be like a plus here and you can make literally a new window from it uh, combat, again, this is like the stuff uh, I was talking about, like, if you die, it says, uh, user died and shit like that, um, then you have the party one, uh, party is, like, self-explanatory, general is basically talking to people in your proximity, um, then you have the whisper, obviously, like, if someone directly is speaking to you, and, uh, Guild Alliance, like here guilds can be allied and they can literally chat at the same in the same place at the same time, which is pretty cool. And you can also fight wars together. Uh, then the chat group is literally like the... It, it's similar to world chat, but like world chat is a lot of spam and like random shit. And it also costs you to type in the world chat. While uh, group chat is kind of like a... It's like a chat made specifically for whoever wants to join it. And uh, basically, it's it's in blue for me right now. I think this is the default. And you have a few people talking here. You can literally change from one group chat to another. There's certain group chats where you can roleplay and stuff like that. It really depends on you. You'll, you'll check that one later, obviously. Now, the font size, I'm sure you know what to do there. The chat scroll animation i have deactivated every sort of animation that is useless uh emoji animation you have emojis in the game and i'll show you right now basically this is the last thing i want to show you guys uh so but i have it active this is the last thing i'm gonna show here so i'm, I'm gonna close the window and uh transparent oh it's transparency make sure you have transparency at 50 let me close the window and i'll show you emojis so like you have those cute emojis and you see how they're animated and they do different things. Well, uh, basically, if you have that turned off, it just like, it makes them just a picture. Okay, now that we talked about this, there's one last thing. Okay, trust me, it's, it, this is better for you because you get less overwhelmed the more you go through this. I know it's a little bit like, uh, 
overwhelming like the first thing you go and you see a lot of shit on the screen there's a lot of uh, noise you just want to get rid of it before you start playing and you don't have to touch them ever again that's why i think this is really important so now i'm just gonna go to edit ui which is the last and best so you have presets uh you have uh like uh, auto align i use auto aligns so a lot of windows on your screen right now so you can see that uh the red ones are windows that you literally can't move like those windows you can't move you you can't take the map and put it in another corner unfortunately i don't know why uh but yeah you can't do that but like the white ones and like the transparent ones you can move so like i can take this and just move it around see like i don't want to move them right now like the, you kind of get the gist of it because there's no point but like you can see with this one right this one is off for me so basically nothing displays on the screen so i can move it around it doesn't matter where where it ends up because it won't show up for me but those that are on are white or red like this right uh you have the map here right you press on the eye on in the corner here and it just closes off the map for example and now if i close this the map will no longer be there but i, I didn't save but like that's kind of the gist of it if i would save it like it says here save with the enter key but i don't want to save it like basically this makes the map not show up anymore and then uh you also have the white ones the white ones you can move around just like the transparent ones and they, you can also make them not show up. So, like, you can press on the eye and it doesn't show up. So, like, the quest widget, it no longer shows it. Now, if I press save, it'll only show me the main quest. If you want that. So, just go around and check it out. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. If it says quest widget, what, what could it be for? I don't know. It's literally in the same spot as the item on your screen anyway. Uh, you also have multiple presets to play with and uh there's combat focus mode like this is basically made by them so you, it, it literally removes all the clutter when you do combat so you can choose that if you want now that i've went through all of this i think we're fine let's just get into the game now basically you just want to do quests for now there's nothing else you can do basically you go talk to the people uh the best thing i can tell you here is it shows you where to go so like you, you can see this huge light right where you need to go you also have like on the mini map you can see a line all the way to the spot and there's a, a blue marker with a red dot which shows you where to go and in case it doesn't the first quest here like i said earlier is gonna be your main quest you just right click and then it shows you the way and now I'm here, and this is basically what I have to interact with. It said it also says examine Athor's heart. It says here in the middle of the screen, Athor's heart, right? Okay, we're gonna just uh do this real quick. And then we're gonna go to the next uh part. Now this is the main quest, right? But as you're walking through there's gonna be a lot of npcs that just have quests for you but th the thing is you want to make sure you don't pick up secondary quests like secondary quests are literally kind of useless you can do them if you want to uh there is a little bit of something for you if you're like uh, a completionist so if you're a completionist you could do the secondary quests whenever you want uh if you don't do them they'll still be there for you when you want to do them so you don't really have to go out of your way right now to do secondary quests just follow the main quest and don't worry about anything else okay so now the main quest finally gives us something to kill now this is something i want to talk about here a lot of uh beginners don't uh, really know about this basically every single time you kill a monster there is a chance that it gives you knowledge about the monster you just killed so if i kill this wolf right now if i were a beginner i would be getting like uh anywhere from um i think it's c to s knowledge on this mob c being the lowest s being the highest 
and uh, what does this knowledge do basically it makes you first of all when you hit the mob it will not show you the hp of the mob as you hit it so uh gaining knowledge about the mob will finally display the amount of damage you deal to the monster uh second of all if you have higher grade knowledge about the monster you also uh deal more damage to the monster by a little bit it's not huge it's not something that is really important but you also gain like you can check stuff about the monster if you press age as soon as you kill the monster if it pops up on your screen and says you got knowledge say knowledge c for this gray wolf when you press age you'll be presented with this screen right here and as you can see that every every information in the game is easily like uh set up here in cat categories basically and you have like ecology which is like you know the monsters in the world and shit bosses and stuff like that and here we are in eastern Balino balenos and beasts and then you have the wolf for example right see i have i already have s on the wolf it says a few things about the wolf like i don't know it's not as smart as the wolf fox and whatever i some of them i don't think they're important i don't know you can read them if you want it's not about reading but here you can keep track of the knowledge you have on the stuff i have s knowledge on everything here in balenos so basically this is why it's like uh it, it shows up in uh blue but not in white text like with others so like where i don't have see like here here it says bosses and it's in white text it's in white text because i don't have all the knowledge about the the bosses like there's bosses that i don't have knowledge on it says here knowledge effect that means when you actually kill a monster and gain knowledge on it you gain points like i have 8900 points and it says item drop rate 25 percent so basically the more knowledge you have on like monsters in general increases your item drop rate and mine right now is at 25 and you can go up to 30 and it's it shows here grade s gives you 10 points where grade c gives you only one point so s is 10 times better than a c you can go up to 10,000 points you get 30 percent at 10,000. so i would suggest you just go through here you kill those wolves you get s on them it's really not too bad they increase the rates for the knowledge as well uh you also level up a little bit in the beginning so like they give a lot of exp right now let's see so like uh that one this one gives three percent now i'm just sluggishly killing them just to show it off but that's basically how you do it so that's what you that's what i would suggest you do now if you don't want to do this it's too tiring it's too much just don't but this is just a suggestion because a lot of people have to gain in the end like it's 20, 25% is a lot, like it's pretty good, and if you can do it early, it's better than just coming with a fully geared character later on, and fighting wolves that you one shot at level 5, you know, it's kind of annoying and boring then, uh, also Black Spirit is just gonna give you inventory slots as you go, so if you're, if you're looking at your inventory right now, and you're, you're like, holy shit, I only have a few slots, well, black spirit is gonna give you uh close to like like 80 maybe 90 and then uh the game also gives inventory slots for free a lot of the time uh i have like full inventory slots and i never bought inventory slots and i have extra inventory slots for another character to fill him up all the way and uh, i would have probably had for now you just want to kill stuff make sure you get s on all of the things around here if you press age oh sorry this guy is hitting me right now one second okay so if you press age if you click on any of those you can press track and now if you track them so let's go to imps for example oh i'm freaking dumb okay it's it's right here uh, anyway uh now if we look on the mini map one second if we look on the mini map see it shows them in teal so you can actually see all the imp soldiers here in teal on the mini map so it's easier to track them down it also uh it also highlights in orange everything that you need to kill as well 
Now, there's uh, there's another tip that I want to give you guys. As soon as you go into the first uh, settlement, which is going to be right here, the main mission will kind of get you all the way here. You'll see all those uh, NPCs like this guy, Handu. You're going to have to talk to him. You're going to have to talk to NPCs in, uh, in this small settlement as well. A lot of them will have like question marks on the minimap. You would like to just go and talk to them and just uh, make sure you interact with every single question mark as they disappear. Because you want you will be getting knowledge on all of them. And it's just easier to get the knowledge now than later when you'll need it. Just interact with every single question mark. Some In some towns you will be uh, walking through multiple times. And it's good if you just get every single question mark off the minimap. Basically, with that knowledge, it helps you like searching for the NPC later. So you have a find NPC function here. You can just type whatever you want. Say, I don't know, uh, let's say Igor Bartali. And if you press enter, it says Olvia Chief Il Igor Bartali or Velia Chief Igor Bartali. It's the same person. They're in both towns somehow. Bro's good at teleporting. Anyway. Uh, that's one of the reasons you want to get the knowledge. Another reason you want to get the knowledge is because, uh, like I said, if the more, if if you get knowledge on all of the characters, it's just uh, really good for you uh, to transverse the map. To so, some characters, just uh, I don't know, are really useful. Now let's let's just get up to the mission. And we'll see. Let's get up to the mission and we'll see. Okay, so no matter what you do before this, you will end up here at this exact window where it says crossroad simplified with green, crossroad main with like whatever is that like, I don't know, brown or whatever color is that. So you'll have to choose from those two options, okay? Now what is going on? Crossroads Simplified, I would advise against it, and I'll explain why. Basically, this is the simplified version in a sense that you no longer have to do quests. It's literally that simple. You literally just kill mobs to get to level 56, and only after you will have some quests left to do. Uh, obviously, this doesn't skip the entire quest line. Just the beginner quest line kind of thing. So like all quests up to like uh, Medea, I believe, will be skipped. Uh, now, all of the rewards from the quests that you would be getting if you do the quests, you will still get them while going the simplified way. There's literally no detriment to going the simplified way. Other than uh, the fact that you don't do the quests anymore, and if you want to go for the, like, uh, 30,000 quests achievement, you probably will have a harder time. That's, like, kind of the only thing you can fuck up. But, the quest is made in such a way that it introduces you to certain, like, mechanics, certain fights, certain people, and so on throughout the world. Which I think is valuable for a new player, even though the quest line is kind of boring, okay? So, like, no matter what you've done until this point, you will still get exactly here and you'll, you'll have a choice. Now, I suggest you go with the main quest line. The main quest line explains a lot of stuff about, like, processing, cooking, like, uh, alchemy and other shit like that. It'll teach you all of that shit. It'll teach you horses, it'll teach you, like, uh, different zones, like, uh, on the map where you can go kill monsters and such. While the crossroad is more for, like, experienced players. Like, if you've never done the quest line, you better do the quest line because it helps you, like, simplify things out. You literally have a path to walk in, while with the simplified version, you, it's like, do whatever you want. Like, it's pretty much a sandbox choice, kind of. You can still choose this, and it, it won't be bad. You can still learn all of the other stuff on your own, and that would be awesome. 
but i think like if you if you don't trust yourself that much i'd say just go with the main simplify just skips everything basically as you level up killing monsters the stuff you would get from the main quest will just be given to you directly as a reward for leveling up so this is what happens now i'll go with crossroad main because i want to do the quests for uh the the achievement i just talked about and uh also i think it's better for uh like an upcoming guide if you guys want to if you guys want me to clarify more things on the way right i will be making guides for everything in the future this is literally the first guide on the channel right now there's gonna be plenty more if you got any question don't forget to leave a comment uh i will be uh answering uh questions from comments as well basically this is how i thought uh any like player that starts the game feels like you know and overwhelmed so going through the settings and going through like uh, the ui and stuff i feel like is really important to make your experience better as a new player and then everything else comes after in my opinion so i hope this video was useful to you if it was don't forget to leave a like don't forget to subscribe for more and uh i guess i'll see you guys on the next one Bye bye